have a look closely at the page. And if you haven't already, um, you can write this heading in your actual book. And the date today is the 5th, 5th? 5th of August today. Okay. So, here is the idea. We have... We have these very many ways of measuring the statistical information, the statistical data, uh, for a set of scores, for a set of numbers. We've got lots of ways to do this, but importantly, some ways are actually misleading or unhelpful. They may not accurately give us a sense of what this set of data is like. So here's what I'm going to do. I'd love us to imagine for all of these that each dot is a person. Let's just imagine each dot is a person. And let's suppose that along the bottom axis, on the horizontal axis, okay, let's imagine that this is, for instance, the amount of money that they earn every year. So all these people have jobs. All these people have jobs. Some of them earn less money. Some of them earn more. Okay? Now, we could change what each one means, but this is just so you have a, vo a vague sense of, okay, this is what I think what is being sort of communicated through this graph. Let's think about the first one. Okay? The first thing is, do you notice, all this data is kind of evenly spread out. Do you see that? It's kind of, there's some that are on this side, some in the middle, and some that are all the way down the really high end of things. Very, very spread out, okay? Um, there's only one set, or sorry, there's only one number that has any more than one person. Do you see it right there? How, how many people are there on that spot? Two. It's just two people, two dots, on that spot, right? So now I'm going to ask, which of the three measures, mean, mode, median, right? Which of those measures are going to place emphasis on that little bump where there's two people? Mean, mode, median. Which one? Anoush. The mode. What, what does mode mean again? The most, the most common, the most frequently occurring, right? So if, for example, here's what we'll do. Why don't we all just put some numbers on here, right? So if just for the first one, you see I think I've given you uh, six, six little markers here. So three, four, five. Six. Okay, there we go. So I've spaced them out. Let's just label the set A. Let's just label it 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. That'll get us to the top, I think. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Now, if we mark out the numbers in this way, when you have a look at the dots, what would the mode be? What would the mode of that first set of data be? It's between the 2 and the 4, right? Between the 2 and the 4. So I think it's... Three, okay? So for set A, the mode, the most frequently occurring score, would be three. But when you have a look at all of the information here, do you see how well spread out they are? Is three the center of the group? Doesn't look like it, right? Like if you were to try and put your finger, put your finger, and I'd love you to hold up your piece of paper so I can see it. Put your finger against where you feel like the center of the data is. Can I ask you to hold up your piece of paper and then put your finger wherever you feel it is so that I can see? Or so that at least someone around you can see? Yeah. So I think most people, most people putting around six, yeah? Roughly around six. Do you agree? Yep. Okay, fantastic. So in other words, the mode, right? The mode is not very useful to us in this case because of how completely spread out our data it is and the fact that even though there's two people there, it's not very useful to say, oh, most of the group is around here. Do you agree with that? Okay. So when we come to answer this question, what's the less appropriate measure for set A? It's, it's the mode. That's a bad idea, right? Because it's kind of skewed, it's sort of misled by this. Okay? So that was set A. The mode is misleading. Let's have a look at set B. Now, you've got mean, mode, median. We already noticed, you see here, there's another issue with the mode here, right? It's the same thing, you've got this big lump here. But there's another problem, if we think now about, say, the median. Where is the median? Which of those dots is the median dot? Anve, where do you see it? Oh, on the next set down, on set B. We're looking at the middle one right now, set B. Yeah, very good. Krishna, was that the one you were looking at? Yep. So if you look at the top of that column for set B, right, you could cross off three scores to the left, and you can cross off three scores to the right, and then that guy right there, that's left over is the median. Okay? So the median there, is that a good measure of the center of the data? No, not really, because you've got all of these people, almost as many of them, and they're way up on the high end of the scale. So the median there, I'm going to write this one, the median on this set 
would also be, I think it's also three, isn't it? It's on that hump there, right? So the median there is also misleading. It doesn't get you near the center of the data. Okay, last one. Maybe you can guess, right? What's the last measure of center that I've got? It's the mean. Now, why does the mean give us a problem on this very last set down the bottom? What do you see? What's the problem with it? Yeah, Shun. There's no more than one number. <laughs> there's, there's no more than... There's only one of each number. There's only... Ooh, hold on. When you say there's only one of each number, what is it that you mean by that? There's only one five, there's only one three, there's only one two. Oh, you're looking down the bottom here like there's two of these. Yeah. There's five of these. Yep, okay. So it is true that we've got different numbers here. However, I don't think that necessarily causes a problem for the mean. You just add them all up and then you just divide by however many there are. There's another issue. Remember I gave you an example of thinking how much money they earn, okay? What are you seeing here? Since, since there's like, it's like most of the numbers are here, it's more than we sent them around here. Mm -hmm. So, I'd love you to um, grab a pen out, which is maybe a different color, if you've got one, and you might notice the data looks something like this. I think that's about right. See how you've got that one score all the way over there on the right hand side, okay? With your other color, with your pen. What I'd love you to do is label that guy. This guy, it sort of lies outside the range of all the rest of our scores. See how everyone's kind of like huddling up on the left hand side? And then there's that one guy lying on the outside, right? Since it lies on the outside, we have a really fancy name for it. Outside. <laughs> it's so very close. It's called an outlier because it lies Outside, okay? It's not within the rest of my data, okay? Now, let's imagine now, I put on numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, right? Here's now what I'd like you to write down on the bottom set of axes. I'm going to change these numbers a little bit, okay? I'm going to make these look like what society actually is closer to. So I'm going to ask us to label down here as like $50,000. Put that on the left hand corner and there's a lot of people who earn about that amount of money in Australia. And then see that one up the top there? Let's just call that $10 million. Now, I know some of you are going to say, Mr. Wu, Mr. Wu, that scale looks terrible. I know. Um, however, I will point out, number one, sometimes we actually have scales like this. They're called logarithmic scales. That's a conversation for another day. But more importantly, I want you to see what's the effect on the mean. Think about this, right? How many dots do you see on the page? How many dots? Can you count them up? Nine. Nine? Eleven. Eleven? Eleven dots. Okay, eleven dots. So, if we took this $10 million and add it up with everyone else's money, right? Do you agree that that $10 million is so large that it kind of dwarfs all the rest of the money that's on there? Do you agree, right? So when I add up everyone's money, it's, a, it's about $10 million and a little bit. How would I calculate the mean off of that? What would I then do with 10 million? Divide by 11, right? 10 million divided by 11. It's just a bit under a million dollars. That's the mean of the amount of income that people earn on this scale. Is that a helpful way? Is that an accurate way to describe this group of people? No, no. no it's not. Which is why anytime you hear in the news about household income, how much people earn, they never actually tell you the mean. In this case, the mean would be a million dollars. And you would say, but there isn't a single person in this group who earns a million dollars, right? All these guys are way under, and this one guy is way over. So the problem with the mean here is that it takes every single person into account, even if that person is way outside over here, okay? Now look back. We're going to reverse this, right? Have a look at the different measures we've got. Which measure helps me overcome this problem? If the mean has this problem of kind of getting taken away by outliers, which one of these would I use which is more helpful to me? What do you think, Bear Avi? The, the median? Okay. The median on set C, what would the median be? Where would it be? It would be in that second column, right? Do you agree? So the mode could also be helpful there. So you can see the median is something we can use to avoid these guys. Uh, 
each me method has a problem, but it also solves a problem, right? The mode. Why is this most useful? Well, would anyone like to tell me what their favorite band is or set favorite singer? Anyone, Merrick? Um, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Okay, someone, Harry, you had your hand up. Queen. Queen. Someone else? <laughs> Does anyone agree with? Actually, let's just go. Let's just, just for the sake of it, okay? I'm just interested now to see what happens. Those were not the choices I was expecting, but I'm kind of delighted by those choices. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to go for a vote, okay? Now, does someone want to say ABBA? Did someone hear ABBA? I don't even know these bands. <laughs> okay, all right. Here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you to either stand up or stay seated. Stand up or stay seated based on this question, okay? Um, stand up if you had to choose to listen to one of those two artists. Either Michael Jackson or uh, I'm going to make you choose, okay? Tough. Or Queen. Okay, stand up for Michael Jackson, sit down for Queen. I'm just gonna, I want to sit down. I'm sitting down. Wow, I genuinely did not expect that. Queen totally won. Queen destroyed. Okay, all right, sit down, sit down. All right, now, let's think about this for a second. Thank you, you're right. So now, if I was sitting a second ago, if I was now trying to work out what's the center of the group, Right? Well, I can't really do mean, can I? Can I? Because I can't add up Michael Jackson plus Queen and then divide by two, right? <laughs> somewhere in the middle, is there like, is there a band somewhere in the middle between Michael Jackson and Queen? Okay. You can't do the median either because they're not numbers. There isn't a number in between Queen and Queen. Or Michael Jackson. All I could say is the most common, right? So, last thing I'd like you to write down. Shh, shh, thank you, you're right. The main time when we use the mode, you can write it up here next to set A, is when data is, um, well, when it can't be counted or it can't be calculated on, right? You don't have numbers there when you've got a genre of music. Or if I ask for, you know, what's, what's the most common eye color? You can't take a calculation to that, right? Well, if I said like blue and brown, like what's halfway between those, that would be a whole different color in between. Except for Mrs. Lee's who is both, and that's, that's cheating. So, 